My name is Zindel Siegel. I'm uh, here in Toronto. I'm a professor at the University of Toronto in Scarborough, and I'm one of the co-developers of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. Um, this is an approach which today seems to be fairly uncontroversial, but when it was introduced in the early 90s in the context of um, helping people who have recovered from depression prevent relapse and uh, introduced into a fairly hidebound conservative psychiatric establishment was uh, controversial and uh, People used words like career suicide when we first started to suggest that there could be real benefits um, to helping people learn how to use mindfulness meditation to work skillfully with their emotions. And um, no surprise, it's about 30 years later and, and mindfulness has become very prominent, prevalent. Um, and I think that um, it's really important to, to recognize that when we're practicing, there are certain ways of helping us understand emotions, understand thoughts, understand the relationships between thinking and feeling that can be very carefully and closely understood through moments of practice. And that can yield insights that I think are quite different from what people might get from psychotherapy or from antidepressant medication. Those are also very um, valuable tools, but adding the perspectives gained through the practice of mindfulness meditation augments what people can learn about themselves and learn about the way in which the mind moves and um, how people can help themselves. So what I'm going to do is um, hopefully leave enough time for discussion of some of these points. And uh, I'd like us to practice with um, one of the ways in which we try and work with um, thoughts in mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. And um, we'll have a chance to, first of all, do this experientially. And then I think unpack it a little bit later on after the practice. Okay. <clears throat> okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm getting a little bit of feedback from people that my mic needs to be closer. So I'm gonna hold it. Is that better? Good, a lot of thumbs up. So I'm going to okay. depart from the traditional sitting posture and in the service of having you all hear what I'm about to say, I'm just gonna hold my mic like this as if I'm performing stand-up or something like that. That's the thought that I'm gonna have. Um, so why don't we um, just take a moment to arrive and to settle into a period of practice and going about it, doing that for yourselves in whatever way seems to make sense for you, just settling in, creating some space for practice. If you feel comfortable allowing your eyes to close, if not, then that's fine. Perhaps finding a spot in front of you and holding it with a soft and steady gaze. And beginning by finding your seat. taking a moment to make any adjustments that would allow you to sit comfortable and supported. And when you're ready, perhaps becoming aware of the sensations of sitting. Sensations that are already here. Feeling the feet pressing into the floor beneath you or the cushion or the mattress that you're sitting on, providing a base. And from that base, feeling the spine rising up from the pelvis with the neck and head balanced. Hands folded in your lap or on your thighs just sitting.
And then when you feel ready, perhaps shifting your attention, moving it into the body, and bringing your attention to breathing, just as it's happening in this moment for you. Perhaps bringing your attention to that place in the body where the breath makes itself most vividly known. And for some, this may be at the belly, feeling the belly rise as you breathe in, expanding and lifting, and falling as you breathe out, or at the chest with each in-breath, feeling the chest opening, and with each out-breath, the chest contracting. or at the nostrils with the in-breath, feeling the friction and the cool air coming in through the nostrils, perhaps even feeling it at the back of the throat. And then on the out-breath, the breath leaving the body, the friction at the tip of the nostrils returning to the room and allowing your attention to simply rest in this region, staying with the breath, with each in-breath, and with each out-breath, not thinking about breathing as much as feeling breathing itself, and not using the breath to get anywhere, simply allowing it to come in and to leave the body, staying close, moment to moment, as best you can. Now you may notice, um, and this is something that happens to all of us from time to time, there may be moments when your attention is not fully on your breathing. Perhaps the mind has wandered to planning or thinking, noticing other sensations in the body or even emotions that may have arrived in the mind. And when you notice that this has occurred, seeing whether you can simply acknowledge the wandering, acknowledge that for these few moments or even minutes, your attention has been elsewhere, not on the breath. And gently without any judgment or blame, simply bring the attention right back to 
this in breath or this out breath. And as Sharon Salzberg, a teacher that I really respect, often says, returning to the breath and beginning again. Coming back, we always have the opportunity to begin again. And so even if in this period of practice, your mind wanders a hundred times, then gently acknowledging, releasing, and coming back to the in-breath and to the out-breath, beginning again as best you can. Sitting, present, breathing. Now, it's not unusual when we sit in this way for there to be moments when we notice some sense of intensity of sensation in the body. And if you're willing, seeing if you can expand your awareness now around the breath, whether at the belly, chest, or the nostrils, allowing the attention to radiate outwards and into the whole body, not a region of the body, the whole body sitting, the whole body breathing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. One whole breath and one whole body. And as you sit, perhaps just scanning and noticing if there are any regions of intensity, places where sensations are making themselves known.
allowing this to register if you're willing. And recognizing as well that there is always the choice of simply moving the body to find relief or simply bringing attention to that part of the body where strong sensations are making themselves known and seeing if you can bring a curiosity and kindness to the sensations that are occurring here. Seeing whether you can notice any fluctuations in the quality of these sensations, watching them as best you can from one moment to the next. Perhaps noticing if they are subtle, intense, continuous, intermittent, hot or cold, tight, bracing, cutting, pins and needles, any other qualities that might be carried by the sensations as you simply watch and observe their fluctuations moment by moment. And recognizing as well that if the intensity becomes too strong, that you can always return more fully with your attention right back to the breath, right back to this in breath and this out breath. And so if you're willing over the next few moments, allowing sensations in the body to become the focus of awareness.
And at this point in the sitting, seeing if you can let go of sensations in the body as the focus of awareness and moving your attention up the body, allowing it to rest at the head and allowing it to move just outside the ears, the left ear and the right ear. Resting your attention here and allowing sounds to be received. Sounds that are available and noticing sound, not needing to create or generate sound. And in the same way as we worked with sensations, seeing if you can become curious about the nature of the auditory stimulation arriving at the ears. Noticing the qualities of sounds, whether they are high pitched or low pitched, loud or soft, expected, unexpected, whether sounds are near or far, inside the room or outside the room. where they are deep, whether they are thin. Simply staying as best you can with the quality of sounds as the focus of awareness. Noticing as well how sounds move through the mind. with sound arising, drawing attention, resting in the mind, and then moving through the mind, perhaps followed by another sound, or perhaps by no sound, and allowing the possibility that the absence of sound, something that we call silence, is equally worthy of your curiosity and investigation. And so for the next few moments, allowing sounds to become the focus of your awareness.
And at this point in the sitting, seeing if you can release sounds as the focus of awareness and moving the attention into the mind, looking into the mind and noticing whether there is any thinking that is present. And just as we did with sounds, seeing whether we can watch thinking itself, watch thoughts or patterns of thoughts. Noticing thoughts arriving in the mind, noticing thoughts resting in the mind, noticing thoughts passing through the mind and seeing if you can become curious about the thoughts themselves, watching them, perhaps noticing some of their qualities, the thoughts that seem trivial, the thoughts that seem important, the thoughts that are commanding, the thoughts that are judging. And just as we did with sounds, seeing if you can notice the th way thoughts move through the mind, arising, resting, and passing through the mind. Perhaps some thoughts are more easily watched and observed in this flow and movement. Perhaps others carry a stronger emotional charge show up in bodily sensations as well and demand more attention. And so if you can, allowing yourself to simply label these thoughts as thoughts as well. And in this practice, it has been sometimes helpful to offer a, an analogy or a metaphor for this way of watching thoughts. And so if you find it helpful, perhaps to consider these two metaphors, seeing if they fit with your experience. One description is seeing whether you can watch your thoughts as if they are clouds passing through a wide open sky, sometimes individual clouds, sometimes clusters of clouds moving into your field of view, resting and passing through, blown by a wind, moving on their own accord. We are simply watching them, perhaps drawn into a curious detail, watching their movement. Another suggestion is to See whether you can watch your thoughts as if they were leaves floating on a stream and standing on the, the bank of the stream, watching the bobbing of the leaves up and down as the current in the water brings them into view. Let's them rest in your field of vision and then carries them past. Noticing some details of the leaves perhaps the parts that are wet, the parts that are dry. Not needing to bend down and pick up any of the leaves or examine them further, but simply watching their movement. And so in whatever way is helpful, allowing thoughts moving through the mind to become the focus of awareness.
And at this point in the sitting, perhaps, seeing if you can let go of thoughts and returning more fully to the breath in the body, feeling the in-breath and feeling the out-breath. And in the last few moments of this practice, perhaps congratulating and acknowledging the time given to yourself for observing and becoming curious about your experience in just this way, moving in closer to these elements. And then when you're ready, allowing your eyes to open and gently returning your attention back to the room and back to the screen. <laughs>